Over the past several weeks, a central meme being pushed by major media is that President Trump will attempt to retain control of the White House following the election. This notion overlooks the Democratic Party's project to subvert the electoral process via mail-in balloting. Foremost in this messaging is one billionaire's propaganda campaign crystallized in the Transition Integrity Project, what we examine on this episode of the Memory Hole Blog Report. Greetings, this is James Tracy. With the 2020 presidential election approaching, there is a program of coordinated messaging underway to condition the public towards believing the White House incumbent will belligerently cling to executive branch power, regardless of the election outcome. The individuals behind this propaganda effort are intent on cultivating the expectation of chaos and a breakdown of civil order in the days and weeks following November 3rd. They frame Donald Trump as an irrational, tyrannical figure who will go to any extreme to remain in office, including using violent force against his opponents and those would-be peaceful protesters in the streets. This line of argument glaringly omits the fact that a seemingly synchronized wave of anarchic rebellion is in fact sweeping through many U.S. cities on the heels of a declared global pandemic for a novel coronavirus, which has a survival rate of close to 100%. An increasing number of observers contend that the real rationale behind the plandemic is to require vote by mail, an unsecure type of balloting that is fraught with the potential for gross manipulation and error. When President Trump and his administration articulate such concerns, their arguments are dismissed by Democratic operatives and a hostile news media as delusional, even conspiratorial. In fact, given the recent history of U.S. presidential elections and the revelations of blatantly illegal Democratic Party-led programs such as Crossfire Hurricane and subsequent frivolous impeachment efforts, any unease over election fraud in 2020 is in fact entirely valid. A specific public relations effort intended to gaslight the Trump administration in the lead-up to the 2020 election is the Transition Integrity Project, or TIP. Transition is a euphemism for what Trump's opposition hoped to be regime change by almost any means, regardless of the election outcome. TIP is best known as an amorphous affiliation of academics and media pundits who convened in June of 2020 to war game various post-election scenarios predicated on what may well be the undetermined or doubtful presidential election results. The group's leaders conclude in a document summarizing the exercise, quote, we assess that President Trump is likely to contest the result by both legal and extra-legal means in an attempt to hold on to power, unquote. Reportage on the Transition Integrity Project's war games makes no secret of the organizers' and participants' assumptions and biases toward the target incumbent. Appendix C of TIP's report, Preventing a Disrupted Presidential Election and Transition, titled Will Trumpism Survive a Trump Loss?, states that TIP participants are concerned about dismantling what they refer to as Trump's significant base of support and many believe it won't easily be demobilized after Trump leaves office. Democratic Party leaders are thus advised not to seek conciliation and compromise with the GOP, but rather publicly support the peaceful protest movement, in other words, the Marxist Black Lives Matter and Antifa groups that have emerged since late May. The animus towards Trump is widespread in U.S. higher education and much of the Beltway punditocracy. 
yet there is the more than subtle suggestion of the Transition and Integrity Project's political allegiances and true motives in its leaders and main funders' very credentials. TIP's public face is Rosa Brooks, a Georgetown law professor and daughter of leftist social critic and author Barbara Ehrenreich. Brooks previously served in the Obama administration's Defense Department as an advisor on strategic communications and information. Prior to this, Brooks worked for George Soros's Open Society Foundation as one of its top legal consultants. Rosa Brooks is also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the World Economic Forum. Despite the Transition Integrity Project's ample backing, the organization still lacks a website with which the public and media would easily be able to see its sources of funding. Alongside Professor Brooks, a central figure behind TIP is political consultant Zoe Hudson. Like Brooks, Hudson has ties to Soros's Open Society Foundations, where for over 10 years she served as liaison between Open Society, the U.S. government, and a transnational network of other philanthropic foundations. Additional oversight of the Transition Integrity Project comes from former UC Berkeley professor Niles Gilman, who acts as the Vice President of Programs at the Berggruen Institute, of which more in a moment. Gilman's efforts towards generating buzz for the Transition Integrity Project have been fruitful, as evidenced in the array of tip coverage in major news media. And here, Gilman is merely the agent of the much more powerful figure behind wargaming regime change. The Bergruen Institute was founded by wealthy financier and philanthropist Nicholas Bergruen. The Los Angeles-based Bergruen is a dual German-U.S. citizen of German-Jewish descent whose estimated net worth is in excess of $1.5 billion, a fortune that, by the way, rivals the entire endowment of Georgetown, Rosa Brooks's employer. That's more than enough to have many an academic and opinion leader swooning his way. I ought to tell you that I am on the Institute's advisory board. Nicholas Bergruen's father, Heinz Bergruen, was an art enthusiast and writer who purportedly amassed a small fortune as an art dealer, establishing the Bergruen Art Museum in Berlin, Germany. His mother, Bettina Moissier, was an actress, the daughter of a self-professed European Catholic, who played a leading role in the first film to dramatize the Jewish Holocaust, entitled The Road is Long. As a philanthropist, Mr. Bergruen is interested in social and political change, and he asserts his Bergruen Institute is nonpartisan. The organization touts itself as a secular monastery and celebrates various left liberal intellectual and lifestyle themes. In 2019, it presented its annual $1 million Bergruen Prize to abortion advocate and longtime liberal Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Along these lines, the Bergruen Institute's themes include examining the prospects of transhumanism, the demise of self, and so forth. Indeed, Nicholas Bergruen's ideas extend to his personal life, for even his two legal children were created under less than divine auspices. TIP is one of many signs of a continuing and intense deep state effort to remove the Trump administration from power, regardless of the probable will of the American people. It does what the left does best, namely accusing the other side of what it is guilty of. In the case of the 2020 election, a fraudulent power grab under the guise of keeping America safe from COVID-19. In the probable event of election uncertainty, the incumbent's attempts to rightly question the integrity of the electoral process or request a recount will be framed as a dictatorial seizure of the executive. An obstinate refusal to accept free and fair elections, even par for the course of the charge of an evil white supremacist desperately clinging to power over the American Union. If you appreciate this work, please consider linking and sharing this video, as well as becoming a sponsor of our work on Patreon 
at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy. <laughs>